Empirical provide compelling, interactive learning across a range of delivery options. Live on site, live online or online anytime, we have a training course that is ideal for you. For a no-obligations chat about your training requirements, contact us at empirical.com. In order to support NAS, RRC and user plane security in LTE, it's important to understand the keys required and also how those keys get distributed around the system. So in this session, we'll identify the different keys required and we will also see how the keys get actually generated in the first instance and subsequently distributed through the EPS authentication and key agreement procedure. So to begin with, what keys are actually utilised? First of all, NAS signalling security. For NAS, we encrypt and we integrity check our traffic. As a consequence of that, we need two separate keys. So we have a key for NAS encryption and we also have a key for NAS integrity checking. Now, it's the same story for RRC. With RRC, we encrypt our traffic and we integrity check that traffic. So again, we need two additional keys. We need a key for RRC encryption and a key for RRC integrity checking. And finally, we've got user plane traffic to be protected as well. Now, we don't integrity check our user plane traffic. It is simply encrypted. So we need one more key. That's five keys in total. And that's the key for user plane encryption. So when we're in normal operation, five keys are required. Just to summarize, two keys for NAS for encryption and integrity checking, two keys for RRC for encryption and integrity checking, and one key for user plane, which is our encryption. So let's see exactly how those keys are created and ultimately distributed throughout the LTE network. Now, this is an abridged version. Everything what you see in this diagram actually takes place officially as part of EPS authentication and key agreement. But remember that EPS aka in itself is actually woven into the whole network attached process. Now to begin with, we have a, a secret key held on board the device, on board the USIM, and also stored at the HSS. And the reference to this secret key that is required is the IMSI of the subscriber. So if the MME is able to provide the IMSI of the subscriber to the HSS, the HSS can grab the correct key to then generate the correct authentication vector information. So we've got the secret key on board. And from that secret key, we generate a master key. It's called Key Access Security Management Entity, or KASMI. So this is the master secret key. So initially, as part of the attach procedure, KASMI is first seen at the HSS. So the HSS pulls the secret key, it generates a random number, and passes those through the appropriate security algorithms to generate KASMI. Now, in order for the mobile to generate KASME, it will use exactly the same algorithms, exactly the same secret key, but it must be supplied with the random number by the network. And that random number is supplied in the authentication challenge at the NAS level. So once that is achieved, once we have KASME, KASME can be distributed to the MME. And it's at the MME and indeed at the user equipment that KASME can be turned into three further keys. So from KASME, we actually use something called a key derivation function to generate the keys for NAS encryption and integrity checking, and also something called KENODE B, the ENODE B key. So you can see identical copies of those keys are held at the mobile and at the MME. Now, during the attach process, as you can see, KE node B is actually supplied to the E node B. Specifically, we see that key being sent in the S1 app initial UE context message. 
So when the MME first sets up the UE context in the E node B, it also supplies this K E node B. Another key derivation process will now take place. From K E node B, both the terminal and the E node B will generate the additional keys required for RRC encryption, RRC integrity checking, and also user plane encryption. So now overall in the system, we've got those five keys held on the device itself. We've got the two NAS keys held at the MME, the two RRC keys held at the E node B, and the user plane key held at the E node B. And remember, these are all symmetrical keys. They are all identical keys. So, one point to note, on occasion, the MME will not need to actually derive the keys. It might actually be supplied with Chiasme, not from the HSS, but potentially from an old MME or potentially from an old SGSN. It really depends on the scenario. It depends on where the subscriber has come from when it first speaks to this particular new MME. So just bear in mind, Chiasme is not always supplied from the HSS, it could come from other directions. So in terms of what we've covered in this session, multiple keys are used in LTE. We saw keys for NAS security, and that's NAS encryption and integrity checking. We saw keys for RRC security, which again was encryption and integrity checking. And we saw a final key used for user plane encryption. And we said that these are symmetrical, so whatever we generate in the network, the identical key also needs to be stored on the device as well. So all keys, all of those five keys and K E node B, they are all generated from the master key K ASME. We also said keys are distributed throughout the system as part of the EPS authentication and key agreement procedure, which in turn is part of the overall attach process. Need to know more? Why not visit our store where you can choose from over 200 hours of video-based training. Alternatively, you can contact us to discuss any specific training requirements you may have.